getting new art supplies is always exciting and I couldn't wait to try out these new high pigment colour pencils from Derwent. And what better way to put them to the test than with colourful clown makeup? The question is, how will they work on fabric? There's only one way to find out. I want to make a kind of sad vintage look clown in raggedy faded clothes so the face really stands out. I was tempted to use white cotton but I don't want it to look too pristine so I'm going to use some quilting cotton in smoke grey for the skin fabric. I've got some grey and white stripes for the legs. I think this grey star print might be nice for the bodice with some tool in purple and burgundy shades. I haven't decided what colour the hair is going to be. I'm going to put the rest of the doll together then see what works best with the fabrics and the face. I'm stuffing all the pieces with some polyester fibre. I find polyester can be a bit slippery and it can be tricky to get the stuffing into the right place with metal tools. I need something with a bit more grip so I'm using a very high tech bamboo skewer as a stuffing tool. I've just cut the skewer to size and sanded the end to round it off. Sometimes the simplest ideas are the best. I've jointed the arms and legs with some metal beads and some polyester upholstery thread. I'm going to paint some shoes before I attach the legs to the body though. The arms will go on later over the dress. I'm using acrylic paint for the shoes with a bit of fabric medium added to it. I've mixed a muted purple shade. I'm not 100% sure about the colour but I know this will darken a bit as it dries. If I don't like it I can always paint over it again later. Once the paint's dry, I can sew the legs onto the body. Then I'll start working on the face. I actually quite like that purple now. I was worried it might be a bit too bright, but it's darkened nicely. I've been excited to try these new colour pencils. These are Derwent Chromaflow. They're professional quality high pigment pencils. The manufacturer says they're opaque so they can be used on a dark colour surface too. And best of all, the whole range is vegan friendly. Question is, will they work on fabric? I'm starting with a deep blue around the eye area. The colour is going on quite well. It seems very dark. I want to get the shape right, then I'll go over it with the blending pencil. Blending works the pigment into the fabric. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the colour. Wow, I'm really starting to see that blue pigment come out now. It's so vibrant. I'm carefully blending outwards to soften the edges. It seems to be blending really well. I'm going to try adding in some purple for a bit of extra depth. That's looking awesome. I was unsure whether to outline the nose with ink, but in the end I decided to keep a soft outline. Some red pencils can look a bit washed out on fabric, but this is really bright. I'm adding a little contouring in dark brown, then I'll blend it again. I'm loving the Chromaflow pencils. I'll put a link to those and the blending pencils in the description if you want to try them yourself. I've given that a coat of fixative. I think the nose just needs a little dab of white acrylic here. Perfect. I've picked out some black resin coat buttons for the eyes. Those are stitched right through to the back of the head.
If you're enjoying watching this little one come together, don't forget to hit that like button and let me know. This helps the video get seen by more people. I feel like she needs a slightly crooked, sad mouth. I'm keeping it quite simple with just a little bit of red underneath. This will need some more fixative, then I'll add some eye makeup in fine line pens. The eyes are going to be the main focus point. I'm using Derwent Line Maker Pens for this. I've always done this asymmetrical detail on my doll's eyes since I started making them. If I'm honest, I struggled with getting the line symmetrical when I first started, but I do really like asymmetry, and over the years it's evolved and become a recognisable part of my brand. I've made her some bloomers from ivory lace and a simple bodice from the grey star print cotton. I've just hemmed it on the top and the bottom and sewn some darts in the sides. I'll position this on the doll then ladder stitch it up the back. I think some of this linen look trim will look really nice around the top. I'm fixing that in place with some super thick tacky glue so there's no visible stitches. I want to make a neck rough for her, but I'll do that last so I'm not catching it when I do the hair. I want to give her dress a tattered look, so I'm making a 2-2 using the no-sew method. I've cut up some strips of tulle in burgundy and purple and I'm looping them around a length of ribbon. This is really easy to do, but it looks so effective. This could be tied on as a removable skirt, but I want it to be fixed permanently in place, so I'm going to stitch it to the body. I'm always tinkering with the way I do things and trying different methods, especially when it comes to jointing the limbs. Today I want to try a slightly different method of attaching the arms to the body with a single thread. I anchor the thread under the back of the dress, then come out through the shoulder to stitch through the bead at the top of the arm. Then I'm passing the needle right through to the other shoulder to go through the bead on the other arm. I'll stitch through each bead once more, then fasten it off under the back of the bodice. This creates a nice strong joint with even tension on both sides. For the hair, I'm using some super chunky acrylic yarn in a dusky blue-green. This shade is called Pixie. It's from the Signet Mythically Chunky range. I'm needle felting it in with the Clover pen style tool and some 38 gauge needles, taking care around the knots on the back of the head so I don't break the needles. I'm 
I'm adding a little streak of a contrasting shade called Unicorn. Then I can unravel the yarn and pull out all those loose fibres. It just needs a bit of a trim at the back, then I'll find something to make a bow. I've made her a hair bow from Vintage Look Cotton Lace in a dusky pink and she's ready to join the circus. I've named her Millie Killjoy. If you like this sad little clown, you'll love this little goth girl I made. Go watch that one next and I'll see you next time. Bye!